Hello everyone! Welcome back to our channel. This is the Dirty South Project and we are in episode number 3 where today we're going to talk about recovery. Um, before all of that, of course, we just want to make sure and hope that everybody is doing okay and doing well and adapting to this very unique situation that the world, in, world is in right now. Um, if you didn't know, if you haven't been following us since the first episode, uh, this first series, mm, season if you want to call it, will take about five parts and these will tackle the five pillars that the Dirty South Project believes in. And these are namely training, nutrition, recovery, which is today's episode, and then we're going to be talking about sleep and last but not the least, mindset. So we've got your initial five episodes coming your way and hopefully you guys learn a thing or two from that. Um, again, the reason why we're doing this is we're not bored, believe us. <laughs> we're actually pretty busy in real life, but we do want to share insights with everybody. Everybody who follows us, everybody who believes in us and our opinions, and we want to encourage growth and development. And that's, you know, pretty much it. And this can be for athletes and or coaches. So today's topic is recovery. And before we even get into the nitty gritty of things, we want to talk about you know, what, what does it mean to recover first and foremost? Now, I want to try to keep this episode very simple and very straightforward because it is a pretty simple and straightforward topic as well. Most people kind of understand what it means to recover and what it takes to recover. Uh, simply put, our bodies, they need time and effort to, to, to let our muscles, our bones, and our central nervous system uh, just to kind of heal and recover. We go about our days, we train, we work out, we just go through our daily activities and all of it is strenuous activities. And recovering simply means giving the time and effort to let your body be prepared for more of that. When we work out, we basically put stress on our bodies. Think about it as whenever you read, whenever you work, whenever you study, whenever you listen to podcasts or anything that's taxing to the brain, you create some form of mental stress. And when we work out, we're creating physical stress. And when this happens, we tear our muscles down, we break down our muscles, and basically it gives room for tissue, stronger tissue to develop. Essentially speaking, the same thing goes for our bones. When we work out, we're also expending energy. This is the energy that we get from the food that we eat and the amount of sleep that we put in as well. So right there and then you have an idea of why you need to recover in the first place. You have a better understanding of why it's important, but we'll kind of go more into detail in just a bit. And on a side note, I want to talk about what one specific aspect of wearing and tearing the body whenever we work out and that's DOMS and it stands for D-O-M-S it stands for Delayed Onset Muscle Soreness now simply put it's just basically a delayed stimulus or it's a, it's a delayed feedback of your body which only comes about 24 to 48 hours after you've done strenuous exercise or physical activity and your body starts to feel as we'd understand it sore um, the reason why I want to dial in on this is because I want you guys to think of soreness as sort of a feedback where your body's telling your brain, your body's telling you that it needs something. And the more we're able to recognize that soreness as a feedback, the more we're going to place importance on recovery. So you, we want to think about how we recover right and i'll kind of go straight straight to the points of what we can do or what what we should be doing for recovery right first and foremost getting body work done or seeking a, a professional like a physical therapist and or getting a massage this is the kind of body work that will involve another person or a machine to do the work for us now given the situation that we're in in the world right now we're living in a pandemic this is not as readily available. But in terms of if everything goes, not if, when things go back to normal, this is one of the, still the more efficient ways. I say this out of pure respect uh, to the professionals who do it for a living. They do proper assessments. It's not just a matter of feeling. It's a lot of it is just how you look as well. Uh, 
and that level of assessment, that level of professionalism goes a long way. So when things go back to the normal, be sure to see your masseuse, be sure to see your physical therapist, and I'm sure all of us miss ours. Number two would be self myofascial release or SMFR as we'd like to call it. Basically, this is your foam rolling, this is your trigger point, and just recently, the, the wide surge of massage guns. And now it's readily available, it's very inexpensive nowadays, it used to be extremely expensive. Um, there are a lot of generic brands out there as well. And with regards to trigger points, it's very efficient, especially because you can pinpoint which parts of your muscle feel tight or sore, and the rolling tends to help a little bit. And that's all geared towards recovery as well. Number three is pretty basic. It's stretching and doing your mobility. Now, this could mean a static type of yoga. There are active types of yoga and that's not always the kind of stretch that we're looking for when it comes to recovery. And when we're talking about stretching and mobility, we're thinking, we're talking about not the ones you do before a workout or a training session as well, where it's about 10, 15, 30 seconds. When we're talking about recovery stretching, we're looking at about one to two minutes staying in holds, lengthening the muscles, and increasing the blood flow, which is pretty much what trigger point work does as well, or SMFR. And that level of blood flow is one of the main ways your body can recover. It's one of the best ways to manage soreness as well. And I'll go more into detail as to why that's important as well. Um, number four would be straightforward, coming out of episode number two, nutrition, eating, eating food. If you're one of those types of athletes that doesn't eat very well, you can sort of imagine how that's not a very efficient way to grow or repair the muscle tissue that you broke down while we're working on while we're training, as we put in the definition earlier. Um, it's not, I'm not going to go too much into the science of what you do, how long you do it, how much you do it, but just dialing in on what food does to your body is important. So when we eat, Regardless of what it is first, we're not gonna think about quality and quantity just yet. But when we eat, we're putting nutrients in our bodies. When we wear and tear our muscles, our bones, it's looking for those nutrients to support its growth and recovery. So therefore, if you're not eating appropriately, whether that's right or enough, could be different things, you're not assisting recovery. Number five, taking supplements. Now, supplements, are exactly what they are. They supplement everything else that is primary and I'm gonna go into that in a bit. So try not to be too reliant on them, but having them in your artillery or having them in your routine can be good for you, especially if you're one of those that trains a little bit more than the standard person. And last but not the least, quite simply put, resting. And the reason why this is important is because we need to give our bodies room to grow. If every single day of the week, you're training to the point of wear and tear and breaking down your muscles and your bones and tiring out your CNS, your central nervous system, there's, there won't be that much growth and development. Your body needs time to adapt. It needs time to recognize what's going on with it and it needs time to repair. And those people who understand the importance of this, of this will see the payout very well in the future. They'll see growth in terms of their muscles, their development, they'll burn fat faster, and the list kind of goes on from there. So why do we focus on recovery? I mentioned earlier about training, but there are different aspects to it, and I'll just kind of be straight to the point when it comes to the different reasons and aspects, especially to those who follow us. In the realm of CrossFit, right, which is what most of you guys do, Intensity is the main thing that we chase. And with intensity, we get results. If you're not recovered, if you lack recovery, there will be a lack of intensity as well. Therefore, with that lack of intensity, the results will not come. And it's important to recognize this because I see it way too often that people tend to focus on doing more and more and more and not focusing on doing less, but giving it their all or giving it their best during that short time period. So again, in the realm of CrossFit, if that's what you're into, intensity brings results. That's not just a saying, 
it's science based there's data that proves it and if you don't recover well enough or if you lack recovery it doesn't matter to me who you are or what you do if you're not doing your recovery properly you can't tell me that you're giving it your utmost intensity now i i accept and i agree the fact that intensity can be relative but that's the whole point of it all if we can manipulate one aspect of our training one aspect of the five pillars that we do for training which is recovery to improve that level of intensity why not get into it in the dis in the discipline of weightlifting of strength training we're talking about something else here right where we're looking at load volume and efficiency in movement so the amount of weight that you can do the amount of reps that you can do given any weight whether heavy or light and your cns your central nervous system and its ability to fire up so you can stay focused on what you're doing um, and its efficiency you need that to be optimal and for an optimal cns you need to recover so an unrecovered cns will likely lead to either failure or very 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 mediocre development and i say mediocre development because if you're one of those athletes that either works on percentages if you're not recovering your cns you will be failing lifts if you're one of those athletes that works on rpe right so rate of perceived exertion for the day so you're not necessarily following percentages if your cns is not recovering chances are you're going to have a very mediocre session and if you're not recognizing when it's time to rest and recover your development will be slowed down or stopped in the aspects of sport this is the most straightforward of them all recovery means less injury and if you're not injured or if there's less injury then your performance is better and that is as simple and straightforward as it can get on a side note here though i want to be very specific because a lot of people i see this all the time i see this not all the time but often there is a very stark difference between working around an injury to dealing with pain while training there's nothing in a textbook that says or encourages that you must go through a training session or a workout session this is for you athletes out there a training session or workout session managing pain managing pain or dealing with it during during certain movements and exercises any physical therapist i know a lot of us tend to be a little bit stubborn and we don't listen to them but don't do this don't do that if it's painful but there's a lot of truth in that and the thing is if we're not recognizing that level of pain as feedback then it's not it's also not very conducive to growth and development so recognize whether you're dealing with pain managing that pain right so there's the difference there dealing with pain was just simply getting through the work without thinking about oh it hurts but you know what it's been hurting forever manage it, managing pain is focusing and dialing in on what you need to do to get rid of that pain working around an injury would be recognizing that at that given moment at the given situation there's not much you can do to let the pain go away so you're not going to force anything that will either aggravate it or make it worse you'll then just focus on other things other aspects that you can do like for example if your shoulder's busted there's no way or there you shouldn't you should be avoiding anything that's overhead or anything that's pressing or the use of your arms but it doesn't stop you from squatting running or doing things that don't aggravate it at all think about that in the aspect of life right so this is more for the regular folks or the athletes who are kind of taking it easy these days pain equals discomfort pain that comes from soreness or injuries either chronic or acute ones um, and when we have discomfort the quality of our lives they tend to go down and it's important to recognize this because just like managing and dealing with pain when or if we have injuries we want to make sure that we're still focusing on the quality of our lives as well that we're not just going about it thinking okay this is part of me now i'm always going to be in pain no not necessarily we need to recognize that recovery is important not just for better performance on your next session but recovery is important so that your quality of your daily life does not go down so i want to talk about when it comes to recovery the essentials and not the non-essentials but what are the secondaries uh, when it comes to prioritizing what you should be looking at so the essentials will be just two things food and sleep 
These are essentials because obviously we don't get through our days without these two. So dialing in on the food, thinking about what quality and quantity you need on a daily basis to gear yourself towards better recovery is important. Sleep, we need to sleep to function, not just our brain function, but physical function as well. We wanna dial in on the amount of sleep we need based on our activity for the day that will again dial in on or focus on our recovery. And a lot of this is very straightforward when it comes to uh, the metrics, three meals a day. Uh, if you're the type that counts macronutrients, you have a good understanding of how much fat, protein, and car carbohydrates, but do your research. When it comes to sleep, six to eight hours, a lot, a lot of people have de very different opinions about it. But to the other athletes out there who train twice a day, three times a day, sometimes eight to 10 hours may be even needed. And sometimes we've got those days where we got the amount that we need, three square meals, six to eight hours, but our body tends to feel that it needs more. Listen to it, give it what it needs. If your body's saying that you need more sleep, do it. If your body says that it's still hungry, if it's, you know, if it's hydrated and it's still hungry, feed it, simple. The secondaries here, or the supplementation will be three. One is mobility, the other is food or training supplements, and the last would be active, active recovery. So mobility work is definitely unlike food and sleep that is essential for the day. It takes time and effort for you to actually do. You need to allocate a certain amount of time during your day, a certain amount uh, allocating some mental uh, motivation and engagement to do it, but it does pay out very well. If you're not sure about what mobility to do for the day, either talk to your coach, get an app, look for a website, do yoga, it's, pretty, it's one of the more simple and straightforward ones. And during this pandemic, so many apps and programs are out there for free as well. So do your research. Food and training supplements. We're talking about your protein shakes, your creatine, your fish oil. Again, there's a lot. And I wanna say the reason why I put it as a secondary in supplementation is because eating real food, whole food, is still more important than relying on these other supplements. Yes, they're very dense when it comes to the nutrients that your body needs, your muscles need to recover, but we should not be too dependent on these. When it comes to these things though, um, for food, I want you guys to think about supplements that are very dense in nutrients ones that you don't get from what you normally eat, such as vitamin C has a cap, but multivitamins in general. Look at what your usual diet is like. Look at what nutrients and vitamins you're missing from there. Search for those food supplements and start incorporating them in your system and see how you feel about it, right? Uh, we have a lot of online stores or physical stores where you can buy all of these vitamins. And there's a lot of references online as well that will tell you based off of what you eat on a regular day, what you're lacking or what you're missing. When it comes to training supplements, there's a lot out there. People will tell you, oh, take amino acids, oh, take this, oh, take cider, oh, take pre-workout, yada, yada, yada. When it comes to recovery, we'll just dial in on a couple of things, specifically three. One, you wanna focus on supplements that have anti-inflammatories in them. You can look at fish oil, uh, when a food supplements, you know, more natural ones like turmeric, do your research, anti-inflammatory, that's the word. Second is hydrating. You can look at drinks with um, ionized drinks. You can uh, look at hydrating drinks, but that's the important word as well, hydration. The third concept would be more recovery oriented things. Creatine is known to be one of them. And creatine is also known to be one of the better supplements out there. Why? It's harder to get a good dosage of it from regular whole food and also it's pretty straightforward when it comes to what it does for your body when it comes to water retention muscle recovery and development so you want to search for the that specific word when you're looking at training supplements recovery oriented last but not the least is act active recovery and i think a lot of people have a not skewed but just a different perspective on what active recovery means so i'll put some guidelines to it right so when we say active recovery it's everything low, low intensity, low heart rate, low volume, short period, and movement oriented. I think everything is self-explanatory except for the last bit where I said movement oriented. So when you're dealing with, let's say active recovery, uh, you, you, your legs are sore and 
you have that mental capacity to say for the day, I'm gonna go through, do some active recovery just to kind of manage, introduce some blood flow in my legs so that I'm less sore tomorrow. You know, a 15 minute jog is more than enough. And most of the time, people tend to kind of go above that or beyond that and look for more. There, it takes a lot of discipline to just kind of cut it off at that point and stop. But trust me when I say this, those who recognize that, those who are able to just stop themselves and say, that's more than enough for the day, I'm gonna focus on recovery and then hit it hard tomorrow, they see the payouts so much more in training. The practice and focus of recovery is not, you know, it's not only often overlooked, but in my opinion, it's also very, un it's undermined as well. Now, though it's a natural tendency to either not want to fully rest or for some rest too much, we must go through the process of finding the right balance of work and recovery, as well as putting the importance to the act of recovery. Take the measures that you need to live and perform better. Now, if you take out that, if you take that quote, you kind of just piece it apart a little bit there. The most important parts is the latter part of it. We put a lot of importance in body image. We put a lot of importance in training, performance, numbers. I do often work with a lot of athletes and people who don't put as much importance in recovery. Now we've set the guidelines. We put definitions. We put what it means to recover and how to recover. Dial in on that. Think about what it means put importance to recovery but more importantly see how you feel and see what it does to your body and ladies and gentlemen that's why recovery is important and i can't stress it enough why it is one of the five pillars in training take one pillar pillar out you've already broken the foundation create its importance give it the importance that it needs and the attention that it needs and you will see the progress that you're looking for. And that's it for today's episode. So I hope you guys had fun. And especially if you guys liked it, please don't forget to share. Also, if you haven't already, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you currently aren't doing so, follow us on Instagram and like our page on Facebook. We post all of our content there, weekly, daily, uh, and it's all for you guys. Again, we want this to kind of shoot out that motivation out there and encourage growth and development whether you're an athlete coach a regular joe or somebody just getting into the sport of crossfit or strength and conditioning we hope you guys are okay and for those who are asking no we don't have snapchat we don't have twitter and we most definitely do not have tiktok <laughs> so uh thank you for watching again and we'll see you guys on the next episode